I'm about to dive into another ancient alien race. I'm so excited. Okay, if you're interested in ancient alien races, this client has, um, we've explored a, a heap of different ones. So check the description, there'll be links there. I've done other sessions with this client, so worth checking out. So, so go to the description, you'll find everything you need there. I'm gonna get started. All right, <laughs> this ancient alien race is the Asir. It's spelled A-E-S-S-I-R, okay? So I'm gonna just read the goals and then I'm gonna get tuned in and we will discover some things. Okay, hi Abby. Ancient race reconnection 4.0 time. This time, can we please visit the Asir race and go with the flow to share, explore, transmute? Thank you. Okay, I'm so excited. I'm just, I'm going to calm down and relax. I can do this. It's so outside the box and fun to connect with something out of this world, you know? Beyond our relationship with space and time even, you know? It's, it's like, like that to me. Okay, still relaxing. <sighs> still relaxing. You know what's interesting? I have tried to introduce this exciting session so many times and I get stopped by this massive yawn, like this crazy big massive yawn. And when I connect with these guys and gals <laughs> or neutrals, we don't know yet, um, I feel so tired, really, really tired. And there's these kind of like energetic I mean, it's a, it's, it's an energy connection. It's not like air, like a bubble, you pop it. Um, it's like a substance. It's not like water. It kind of builds upon itself. Um, but it's like a substance. Um, and it's, it's built up and there's these bubbles that are coming out of it. Um, it's kind of an orangish yellow color. And it's, it's a lot on my third eye and crown. Um, nothing uncomfortable about it at all. Um, I just feel very tired, very sleepy. So I'm going to go with it. This is the path to this Asir race. Relaxing even more. I understand now. When I relax, I become very quiet vibrationally. So it's almost like you can't walk into a church and start going, yeah, I'm here. I'm finally here. And everybody's like in this prayer and the priest is saying the sermon. So I have to be really quiet because it's kind of sending the vibe that I'm interrupting them. <laughs> so I really, really, maybe I am in church. Maybe that's why I'm yawning. <laughs> So, okay, I have to get really quiet here. That's that's asking a lot of me. <laughs> okay, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to have to project a, a part of myself that's not laughing and hysterical inside. So I'm projecting a version of myself into this quiet zone where I am perfectly silent. 
and I'm just going to be like a fly on the wall type energy. I'm not going to move. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not, I'm not even going to exist there kind of thing. Like I'm quieting my vibration to the point that it's almost like I don't even exist there. But I have to get tuned into this somehow. So I have to be as quiet as possible. Okay, I'm going to tell you guys a couple things. One is, something feels uncomfortable now, and it's making my head feel burny. And I kept seeing what was two paths, one that goes down and one that goes up. And almost like I was at a crossroads of going up or going down and I was going to have to decide. But at that point, that's when it was like, you know what, the pathway is through silence. So I'm not going to decide whether I go up or whether I go down. I'm just going to go through the pathway of silence. Um, and to accomplish that, I pretty much have to become non-existent, which isn't really appropriate, you know? That tells me that I need to stir the pot a little bit, and maybe it's time for them to get a little bit of a whiff of, of sound and vibration and reaction. Because something feels out of bound, like, not, not right here about, about how insanely quiet it has to be. And the only way for me to really understand it is to be the opposite or just to be myself with it, you know? I thought maybe I was being respectful, but it's not really... Something feels wrong. Okay, that's the next layer. That's the next thing. This also could be a reflection of me moving through an energy membrane... I've done this before, where some, um, I don't know if this is still a living race or not. Either way, I, I've connected with other races where there's kind of like a psychic membrane um, around their race. So if you want to visit them, you have to go through it, which can create challenge for you. Like it can create different experiences in order to actually reach their collective consciousness. So that might also be what this is. I don't feel like I've gotten to them yet, but I'm just going to describe everything that it takes to get to them. So this is the next thing, all right? And it's kind of like this orangish yellow that's more molded. It's more um, blended together, so it's a really light orange color. I don't like the way it feels um, on my around my head. It feels kind of like like cinnamon, like a you know, like a a hot tart, um, spicy on your tongue. It's kind of spicy um, on my um, around my head, and it kind of feels a bit fiery. So I'm gonna have this part of me continue to move through this orange energy. I'm going to take another part of me and I'm going to go up because it appears that I, I went more downward instead of upward. So I'm going to go up now. So I'm doing two things at the same time. It um, It's exhausting my heart. It's very hard on me. It's very tiring. I'm crying a lot. This is the me that's going down. Um, I'm processing all these things. Now that I'm out of that energy and I'm above looking down, I can see this is part of the, uh, some kind of weird process. So I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to go up here and we're going to learn more stuff. I feel like you're holding back. I say to their collective conscious, I feel like you're holding back. I feel like you've got pent up. Like it reminds me of anger to me. Um, because it's burning my head, I also can feel pressure building in the heart. It's like too much silence. Um, the silence needs to be broken. So I'm just telling them my opinion. And this is what my opinion is. And it's okay for me to be wrong. So they can tell me whatever they want. I just want to hear what they have to say about that. Hmm. 
All right. There's nobody for me to talk to. So I'm going to have to just allow images then to come through. It's not like I'm talking to any energy field or any physical beings. So this to me, it's more, I feel like not a living race, but um, let's just see what comes next, okay? Okay, I'm just saying to my guides, higher self, the Asir race, what can you tell me about them? I'm saying it to their collective. I'm saying it to whatever um, remnants and time, etc. That that remain. Like I should be able to access information here that isn't challenging me. Um, however, if I need to be challenged in order to access it, I'm okay with that too. It's just, it's great because we're wanting to learn and grow here. If there's some ways that I could help their race or the history or the memory or whatever, or that they have some suggestions for us, we're here to grow. So, but I'm being shown, um, two laser beams and they're white and they're like yellow, white, yellow, um, orange. And they make a pretty design. Um, and I see the laser beams kind of work together to create, and they work with fire, and it creates a really pretty design on the ground. And it's about balance. Again, I, I feel um, lava, I feel hot um, energy that's really hot. I feel energy that's extremely silent. I ask them to share more with me and they may have to just show me some more pictures. No, they tell me to step onto this whatever this is on the on the ground, so I do that. Okay, and now I'm sinking into the lava. The ground is going down and I am sinking into the lava and the lava is yellow. It's yellow lava. And I'm, I'm, I'm crying and wincing in pain um, as my body is deteriorating in this fire, this molten fire. And I have to allow myself to be completely swallowed by it. Um, it's like a weird ritual. So I'm screaming and crying as my body is being consumed by this fire. I have to continue to stand here until I'm dead, basically. And I have to be consumed by it so that I will be one with this lava. I will be one with this molten energy. Um, there's something in the soul that desires to be in oneness with this molten lava energy. It's almost like they wanted to descend into um, the substance. Wanted to descend into it. Is it descending or is it their version of ascending? Isn't that peculiar? They have two roads. You can go down or you can go up. But it's like um, they're descending, in my opinion, into it. But they, they, this is their way of shedding the body and now becoming the spirit form. And they wanted to be in, in oneness with this energy consciousness that has to do with basically the heat that melts rock. And I see their collective um, collecting um, in this energy consciousness. I don't feel like it was a healthy choice, though. Um, I've seen sacred ceremonies like kind of like this, um, where it's profound, and I, I experience what is um, a gift, a powerful gift of love and support um, between the spirit realm and the physical world. But this is basically, um, this is like, it's an interesting idea. Imagine if, if the whole human race, we make a decision collectively, um, to go through a death experience. We all, all go through this death experience. Um, but then our collective souls will work um, at a higher dimensional plane because we'll shed the body, but we'll remain together in the spirit realm. And then as spirits, um, we will do the next thing. Um, I feel like... Um, you know, you remember a long, is it the Hale Bop Comet or some? A long time ago, I was just a kid, but there was like a, a cult and they were going to um, go to the Hale Bop Comet, something like this. Um, 
and I don't know what it was about exactly, but everybody died, and and then and that's what it was about. So this is some, something similar where it, that's what I'm being shown here that this race ascended um, in the most peculiar way. But I feel like they they didn't ascend. I feel like they descended. Their their thought was that they would be ascending because they would be shedding the body by doing the ceremony with the the heat, um, the fire that melts the rock. So then they would just be um, getting swallowed. I mean, they saw it. They're showing me that this is a mouth. This is us being um, merged with um, the substance. Like we will be consumed by it. But they, they, it doesn't, I, I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree vibrationally. I'm reading the patterns here. Um, it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't vibrate right to me <laughs> on the soul level even not just my ego and my mind um, but on the soul level and i'm always open to them showing me why that worked for them or what but i feel that this collective is somehow stuck um and they need to get they they need some support <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to go through this. I'm screaming and my head is, um, there's molten lava now on my head and I'm screaming and it's, um, it hasn't consumed my brain or my mind. Um, I'm still alive and I'm just screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming and screaming. And I'm, I'm sort of stuck in the, the pain of, of this suffering. And I can't get out of it. And I'm trapped in a state of screaming for my life. But I'm dead already. <laughs> so. I, I, I'm going to, I'm just going to say with, without judgment at all here. Because I'm just shocked, okay? So I have to process this through my ego, okay? So my ego is just like, what? You know? But I, I can just clear that out. And I, and I can say, did this work for you guys? Like, what can I do to help? Because I'm, I'm, I'm showing them that um, this is what's coming to me. A collective choice. Went through the choice. I don't see you guys ascended. I Vibrationally, you're very low vibration. I can help you. They can't let go of what they thought was the right thing to do. They can't let go of it. Um, they're going to need to forgive themselves and each other. They ended up hurting. They ended up dying in a really painful way and remained in pain after they left. They didn't. It wasn't a collective um, exciting moment. It was like torture. <sighs> But to be honest, I feel this race had lived its time. It had done what it needed to do. I see these beings as um, kind of like wise Native American type, like tuned into nature, not speaking. It almost seemed like a race that didn't speak, vocally speak. Um, they just seemed to sense what each other was saying, but they became solemn, like kind of um, not animated, not excited, um, just kind of silent and withdrawn. Um, emotionally, I don't feel like joy and celebration in life. So in a way, maybe they work together to, to choose like a collective suicide that was going to be and their, their interpretation was going to actually um, free their collective into something better than this. But it, what it did was just imprison them in, in a vibration on a spirit level now of suffering. It didn't, it didn't, it just, they basically transitioned into, in, into a new version of, of the same pain in a way. They, they, I don't know why they weren't happy. They weren't, um, alive. They weren't like in spirit, in their hearts. It's like they lost their, um, light. And so they were drawn to light. They were drawn to the fire. They were drawn to the light. And after saying all that, it was appropriate because that was their collective idea. That was their collective decision, and they did it with they did it as a as a collective choice. Um, so in a way, to get to get to what they had desired, 
um, they needed this event in the spirit realm um, in order to actually reach the ascension that they, they were wanting to achieve. They didn't want to be the body anymore, period. The only way to shed the body was to die. So they collectively all died so they could shed the body to get to the next thing. But really what happened is they got they got kind of stuck in the dimension of torture and suffering because it was painful way to die. Um, but I feel like their souls also absorbed a powerful amount of, of learning and awareness in the digestion of this, which is actually going to rebound um, something very beautiful to come back to them. So I, I actually feel now that somehow us doing this um, is the shift that they needed in order to now get free to ascend, which was exactly what they wanted to do. I I feel like they needed a conversation. They needed someone to break the silence. I'm thinking of whoopee cushions. <laughs> Someone's got to break the silence. <laughs> it's like people farting in church in, a, in a, like a really quiet moment. <laughs> they need laughter desperately. They like desperately need laughter. No wonder I was yawning. I was like, God, you guys are putting me to sleep. <laughs> uh, they need laughter. They need it. They need whoopee cushions. They need silly gag jokes. They need something funny. It's helping them to wake up. It's helping them to revive. They feel a lot better. They feel like uh, children of the sun kind of thing. Like, um, like they're waking up from a really long and painful dream. Um, and their eyes are remembering the sunlight. And that's why they chose the lava. Because they, they were wanting um, instinctively at the soul level. They couldn't, they couldn't translate it. So they were wanting to return to the sun. So that's why they went to the lava because it was the sun on earth. It was a fire on earth. Um, so that's why they did that. But then they had, they remained in the suffering side. That's why they took the path down when really they're trying to take the path up. So I feel like they can now ascend, which was the ultimate goal. That's what they wanted in the first place. There's something happened and they lost the spirit of life, creativity, love, um, laughter. Um, it's almost like they, they just lost that energy and they kind of in, in losing that energy, they, um, still had a spiritual connection, but they didn't have the, the actual fire, the, the passion, um, in their spiritual connection. It felt like numb. Um, it felt like, uh, it was missing a lot. So that's why they wanted to shed the body. Um, because that's the only thing that could, they could process would do this. Um, so I feel them now seeing the sunlight and now rising up to the sun. I, f I feel this for them. I feel so much better because um, I feel so much better about it all. I, it all makes sense now. It all makes so much sense. And I'm so happy for them. I'm so excited for them. I'm so happy to be here. I'm like cheering them on and, and telling them just how much, how loved they are and all that stuff. They're very kind of, this is a very Native American type man. Um, he has a huge, I don't know if these are leaves or feathers, but he has some kind of huge headdress. Their cheekbones are way more prominent. Um, their face seems longer, like their jaw hangs down further. He just looks at me because they don't say anything. They don't speak with a voice, but he's just, he's just acknowledging, he's acknowledging all of us. Hmm. I am seeing a very strong side to their persona, a bit intimidating, to be honest. And so it makes me wonder what their soul collective has learned from all of this challenge, this breakdown even, and now ascending into the light. They, they have, um, they have a, a heaviness to their souls that create something uniquely different than other souls. I'm not familiar with this tone. Uh, this is soul sound. And it sounds like a lot of heavy rock. 
It sounds like um, a very stern, strong face. F sounds to me like very strong foundation, but it feels like it became very lost, in my opinion, just in, in the balance. Because it should have harmony. He's now shedding his uh, headdress and everything, and he's a... Uh, He's shedding the body now fully. And he's becoming a child of the sun. And he's shedding tears for too much um, heaviness, too much pain. Was it a collective choice or did somebody told, like, if it feels like a tragedy, it's just a lot of tears about tragedy and suffering and sorrow, and the only way out, and the pain that came from that choice, and the return to the light, and the healing of the soul, and that's what that sound is. Man, makes an imprint, you know? All right. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for this experience. It's truly like an honor. <sighs> I'm just coming back to myself here. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for all these experiences, um, for this experience today. It was um, truly one of a kind. Um, for those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Um, I have two other YouTube channels, so you can check me out at Abby Normal and Zodiac Energy Readings. And then I'm also on Patreon um, at patreon.com slash Abby Normals Wisdom Quest. All right. Have a great day, everybody.